Hello friends, Riley here. I'm really excited to be exploring the Akai Pro MPD-218 drum pad controller with you today. In this video, we'll be covering everything you need to know to get your device registered, your included software downloaded and installed, and getting your MPD-218 working with MPC Beats in DrumSynth 500. Let's get started. Let's kick things off by registering your MPD-218. In your web browser, go to akaipro.com and click account in the top right corner. If you don't already have an InMusic profile, click create account to begin creating one. This is where all your registration info and activation codes will be stored. Fill out all the fields, then click next step. Akai Pro is part of the InMusic brands family of hardware and software companies. So if you own any products from any InMusic brands, or you're interested in learning more about any of them, select each one here to receive updates and tips. Then, agree to the terms and conditions and hit Create Account. Next, check your email for a message from Akai. In that message, click the link to confirm your account. Now it's time to register your MPD-218. Under My Registered Products, click on Register New Product. To find your product's serial number, flip it over and locate the barcode. The serial will begin with 21 in parentheses. Be sure to enter it exactly as it appears on your unit. When your product is found, enter your purchase date and purchase location and hit register my product to complete your registration. On the next page, click see details, downloads and offers and scroll down to find your two software downloads, one for MPC Beats and one for DrumSynth 500. Under DrumSynth 500, simply click the link for your operating system and it'll begin downloading. Under MPC Beats, click download now and on the next page, click free download. Enter your name and email address for your download and fill out the rest of the prompts to get your download link emailed to you. Then just open the email and click the download link for your operating system. Pro tip, keep your product registrations tab open so you can access it later to retrieve your serial number for activating DrumSynth. All right, so now that your downloads are complete, double click the downloaded zip file for each program and click and drag their contents to your desktop or other desired folder. This step is important for Windows users, as the installer files can't run while still in the zip files. On a Mac, you just need to double-click the zip file and it'll extract automatically into its own folder. After the installer is finished unzipping, simply double-click the setup file for MPC Beats and follow the prompts to complete the installation. Do the same with the DrumSynth 500 installer. On Windows, I recommend checking the boxes that create desktop shortcuts for these programs so you can easily access them whenever you want. Now, both MPC Beats and DrumSynth 500 are fully installed on your computer. MPC Beats is ready to go, but there's one additional step needed to get DrumSynth up and running. Open DrumSynth 500 and click the Activate button. Remember that product registration page you kept open earlier? Go back to it and click Get Serial next to the DrumSynth 500 dropdown. Highlight the whole code and copy it to your clipboard. Then go back to DrumSynth, paste the code into the boxes, and click Next. You'll then be prompted to enter your email address for activating your software with the iLock License Manager. iLock makes it easy to keep all your product registrations in one spot, so log in with your existing iLock account if you have one. If you don't have one, just enter your email, and on the next screen, next to On My iLock, click Store. On the next page, click Create New Account, and your browser will open the iLock registration page. Just like with your InMusic profile, fill out all the fields in the sign-up form, complete the CAPTCHA, and click Create Account. Then, open the email iLock just sent you and click the link to confirm your registration. Then log in with your email and password on the next screen. Click Continue to access the iLock License Manager download page and click the download link for your operating system. Once it finishes downloading, extract and run the installer, just like you did with MPC Beats and DrumSynth. Then open the iLock License Manager and log in with your credentials to view all your registered products. You won't need to log into this account too often, but if you ever want to transfer a license or register a product for use on multiple computers, this is the place to do it. Now, go back to DrumSynth and log in with your iLock credentials. 
choose your desired activation location on the next page. I'm going to install mine right on my computer. And that's it. Now drum synth is ready to go. We'll start using it a little later on in this video. Now that your software is installed and ready for action, open MPC Beats. The welcome dialog lets you choose between creating a new project from scratch or selecting any of the built-in project templates and demos. I'm going to open an empty project for right now. First, let's get your MPD-218 linked to MPC Beats. In the top left corner, click the MPC Beats menu and go to Help, Open Startup Wizard. The wizard will tell you to plug in your device. Take your provided USB cable and plug one end into a USB port on your computer and the other end into the back of your MPD-218. You'll see the control bank and pad bank lights turn on when power is supplied. Click Next in the wizard to arrive at the MIDI map screen. The MPD-218 has a mapping built into MPC Beats, so it should be selected by default. If it isn't, click on the drop-down menu and select Factory, Akai, Akai MPD-218. Lastly, the wizard will let you select either the Simple or Advanced Workspace option for MPC Beats. Since we're just getting started, I'm picking Simple. As the wizard says, you can always change between these two modes at a later time. Our next step is to open the MPC Beats Preferences menu by going to Edit, Preferences, or pressing Control comma on a PC, or Command comma on a Mac. In the Audio tab, Set your sound output to your preferred device, whether it be your computer's internal sound or an external device like an audio interface. On Windows, you'll have the option to select which computer audio device to use. Make sure you select the one you want to hear your sound through, then pick its output accordingly. Next, click the MIDI slash sync tab to see that MPC Beats has connected to your MPD-218 via MIDI. If your device name doesn't appear on this menu, make sure the Enable MIDI Ports When Discovered option is turned on, then disconnect and reconnect your device's USB cable. By default, the MPD-218's input port will be set to Track and Control. Let's learn which input modes are used for different methods of control. Turn on Track to allow your device to be used as a MIDI input device in MPC Beats. Turn on Control to allow the software to accept MIDI control commands from your device. For instance, the MPD-218 has eight Q-Link knobs that can be mapped to control different aspects of the software. Make sure control is turned on before using these Q-Links with any of the pre-made MIDI mappings or the MIDI Learn function. Turn on Master to make sure the software is always listening to the MIDI input from the MPD-218's pads and Q-Link knobs, no matter which track you've selected in MPC Beats. In this tab, you'll also see options to send and receive MIDI sync and clock messages, which allow you to sync the MPD-218's note repeat function to your MPC Beats project tempo. Let's set this up now while we have it open. Under Output Ports, make sure Sync is turned on for your MPD-218. In the Sync Send section, set the Sync output to MIDI clock. Now that everything's connected, let's make some beats. To access the drum kits and samples that come standard with MPC Beats, click on the Media Browser icon in the bottom right, or simply press the B key on your keyboard. So, if I want to use the Gutter Bomb kit, for instance, I simply click and drag it onto the pads in the software. Now, all 16 pads on the MPD-218 are linked to a different sound in the kit. Before trying out the pads, it's important to make sure that your MPD-218 is using the appropriate program for MPC Beats. Press and hold the Program Select button and tap Pad 5 to load Program 5, which is the program you'll need to have your samples mapped to the correct pads. So go ahead and experiment with your newly loaded drum kit. You'll hear that the pads are pressure sensitive. This means the volume of the played sample depends on how hard you tap the pad. If you want all samples to play at full volume, regardless of pad pressure, press the full level button. On the left of the unit, you'll see that you have three available banks for both the pads and Q-Link knobs. This makes it easy to switch between drum kits and different methods of control while recording or performing. Let's find out how to use the banks to load more samples. Press the pad bank button once to switch to bank B. In your project, do the same by clicking B in the pad section. 
Now you have an entirely new set of pads without replacing the kit you just loaded on bank A. Use the media browser to pick any samples or kits you want to use in this bank and click and drag them onto the desired pad to load it. Then use the pad bank button to switch between banks A, B, and C. So your pads are working, but you may notice that when you turn any of the six Q-Link knobs, nothing changes in MPC Beats. Let's fix that. In the bottom right corner, click the MIDI Learn icon. At the top of the sidebar, underneath Global, click Enable. Now if you turn one of the Q-Link knobs, you'll see it change a parameter in the Q-Link section in MPC Beats. By default, the knobs will be in screen mode, so knobs 1 through 4 will control the bottom four parameters, which are program level, playhead position, and horizontal scroll and zoom. Just like the pads, the Q-Link knobs also have three banks. Press the control bank button to switch to bank B. This causes the top four Q-Link knobs to now control the time correction, time division, swing amount, and time correct strength parameters. Pressing control bank once more will, you guessed it, control the next four parameters. Now, the project settings aren't the only adjustments you can make with the Q-Link knobs. Next to Q-Link mode, click the drop-down menu to reveal all available modes. Pad parameter makes each knob control the individual volume of each sample in your kit. Pad scene provides you with several controls for each individual sample. Repeatedly tap one of the pads and flip through each control bank to control different aspects of a sample. Program mode makes each knob control the selected parameter for the entire drum kit. Finally, Project Mode controls the volume, panning, mute, and on-off settings for each track in your project. This mode can be used when you have multiple programs and tracks running. Now let's cover one of my favorite features on the MPD-218, the Note Repeat function. Pressing and holding the Note Repeat button will make your drum samples repeat at a specified interval. To change its settings, press and hold the NR config button. While holding it, press any of the lower eight pads to change the interval at which your sounds will be repeated. You can also change the swing percentage by tapping pads 9 through 14. The higher the swing percentage, the more your notes will play with a sort of swinging, syncopated feel. The last two pads, 15 and 16, are for setting the metronome. Tap Tempo operates by simply tapping the pad to your desired tempo. However, this value isn't synced to your MPC Beats project tempo and will likely result in your recording sounding out of time. Luckily, since you set up the MIDI clock function earlier, all you have to do is tap the external clock pad, and the MPD-218's metronome will be in sync with the MPC Beats metronome. Keep in mind that MPC Beats must be playing back audio in order for the MPD-218 to receive clock messages. Make sure to press play in MPC Beats before trying out note repeat in external clock mode. So now that you have command of the built-in sounds and kits, let's find out how to use Drum Synth 500 with MPC Beats. Go back to the MPC Beats Preferences menu and click the Plugins tab. At the top, click the checkbox next to the first dialog box, 
then click the ellipsis to its right. This window prompts you to select a folder to load VST plugins from. Since we want to load DrumSynth 500 into MPC Beats as a plugin, we need to enter its file location. On Windows, the default DrumSynth 500 VST location is C, Program Files, VST Plugins, DrumSynth 500. On a Mac, it can be found at Library, Audio, Plugins, VST. I put these file paths in the description below so you can easily copy and paste them. After entering the file path, hit the Enter key, then click Open. Then click Rescan All to make MPC Beats begin scanning your selected folder. And boom, there's your plugin. Now you can use DrumSynth 500 in your project tracks in MPC Beats. In the toolbar, click the Track View icon to view all currently used tracks in the project. In an empty project, Track 1 will be unused, so let's use it for this. In the Tracks Program Select, click the Plugin icon. By default, MPC Beats will load an instance of TubeSynth on the track. To change it to DrumSynth 500, click on the Plugin drop-down menu and click the plus next to VST to find it. Once DrumSynth loads, click the Explode icon to view its full interface. Here is where you can sift through presets and adjust the plugin in any way you see fit. Additionally, you can use DrumSynth 500 as a standalone program without needing to use MPC Beats. This comes in handy when you just want to plug in your MPD-218 and start making noise. Close MPC Beats, then open the DrumSynth 500 application. Now that we're using a program that isn't MPC Beats, we also have to adjust the MPD-218's program. Press and hold the Program Select button and switch to Program 4. Your device should automatically connect to DrumSynth with your pads mapped to the samples in the loaded drum kit. If your pads are unresponsive, click the gear icon and make sure your device is selected in the MIDI input device section. This is also where you can change drum synth's audio output, sample rate, buffer size, and metronome. When you begin using the MPD-218 pads with a drum synth, you'll notice some of the pads don't trigger a sample. Fortunately, it's really easy to reassign the pads in drum synth so you can change which pads trigger which sounds. In the sampler that has the sample you want to reassign, click the MIDI icon. Then, just press the MPD-218 pad you want your sound mapped to. Now, feel free to customize your pad layout for whatever you're using your MPD-218 for in any way that makes sense for you. And with that, we'll wrap up our video for today. Thanks a million for tuning in! To access more resources for your MPD-218 from Akai Pro, check out the links in the description including the link to MPC Beats Academy, which you can use to really harness the full creative potential of your device. Now go get some beats cooking. I'll see you next time.